Hello everyone, this is Jimmy Cultus back again with another Exploration game video. And uh, we're sort of, um, what do you call it, reaching a, a state where we don't entirely, you know, have as much left to do, so we're kind of picking off the more ancillary elements of game development. For instance, today I'm going to be covering fixed camera angles as by request I believe one of our loyal viewers was asking about how to use a camera creatively in a game and I believe they were talking about fixed camera angles because that's a pretty good example of using a camera creatively they might be talking about cutscenes which we could also cover but for now we're gonna do fixed camera angles. And we're going to go ahead and dupe out this block because it's necessary to have a mount, a non-collidable invisible mount. Turn these off and you might as well turn the physics cost to low because you're not going to be using that. I'm also going to turn off the luminoise just because it looks cleaner. And we're going to change the color of the microchip to blue and change it to a camera. And we're going to rename it to Camera Camera Fixed. That's pretty much what we're going to be dealing with. Of course, we're not going to be using any of these um, these variables here. Setting up a fixed camera angle is pretty. Uh, what do you call it? Pretty simplistic in some regards. All you need is a camera. Usually set it to cut, that's how most fixed camera angles create their, you know, perspectives. They just have the camera cut abruptly to a new, you know, area or whatever. Something to bear in mind when creating a game with fixed camera angles is you might want to design the environment in such a way that it is conducive to the cameras, which means enough space for the camera to have a good view of something and also easy to navigate and keep, you know, keep a reference in your head. You don't want to disorient people, but I'll get into that a little bit later. All you're going to need is a trigger zone. Set it to you know, detect a label, set it to a cube, because rooms are most often cube-like anyway. Rarely are they cylindrical, although sometimes they are, and rarely are they spherical. And we just set all the labels to off, except for friend. Next, what we're going to do is extend the borders and again, you're going to do this tactically, because as soon as anything enters the zone, be at the tip of his nose, or anything, it's going to trigger this zone. So you want to think about that, and not have it too wide or overlapping its boundaries. Now let's come up with a little handy dandy fixed camera angle. This seems very dynamic. And we're going to create another one, just so you have, you know, like an idea of how this works. And make sure that the zones, this one should slightly overlap with that one, because you don't want a moment when there's no cameras running, and you just lapse into normal view, if you know what I mean. Like the normal puppet camera will just take effect. And then where will you be? I don't know if I if I would make a detective game with fixed camera angles without proper controls because it can be somewhat of you know difficult when you're dealing with the regular control scheme to navigate but we'll try it out There we go though this is a fixed camera angle now let's go ahead and give it a try. Of course, if this was a game with nothing but fixed camera angles, we probably would have a fixed camera angle in this room. However, there are some games that hybridize these two approaches. They'll have a free camera sometimes, 
and at other times they'll have a locked camera or a fixed camera. But here we are. Oh, one thing you want to remember to do is just select both of these. I turned on can turn off controller sensor input because that's commonly what you do with cutscenes, but in this case you don't want to do that. Leave that off. Otherwise your puppet will just freeze up when he enters, you know, the zone. And as you can see, it's a little disorienting, like uh, kind of having trouble guiding the character properly, so keep that in mind when designing a control scheme for something of this nature. I gotta admit though, there's something about fixed cameras that's kind of neat. It's sort of artsy, I guess, I don't know. But always test the borders, make sure you can't, uh, what do you call it, glitch things out. And uh, you want to design, like I said, you want to design levels in such a way that the fixed camera angles, you know, make sense. Like an entire room for an angle, if you know what I mean. You don't want two angles in the same room, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Not that it can't be done, but it's just inadvisable for the most part. It also depends on how you place your camera. You have to be thinking about human equilibrium, how we orient ourselves. Got to be careful not to, you know, get yourself mixed up with new camera angles. As the creator, you know what's coming, but think about it if you were playing this game fresh and then you just had a wild camera change. Probably would, you know, mess you up a little bit. But here's a good example of why you don't want to have, you know, two angles in the same room. Just look at that. It's chaos. If you had a larger room, it might work. Or if you had some kind of boundaries to fix the player's um, approach. Or, alternatively, if you just had a similar angle. Let's try it from this angle. It's a little bit less arbitrary to the other one. That works a little better, a little less disorienting, although in the between area you'll still get a lot of... Ooh. But anyway, those are just some friendly little tips about fixed camera angles. And by the way, if you wanted to have a more cinematic look for whatever reason, I don't know if any games have ever done this, but you can display black bars, and then you'll end up with this effect, you know? looks kind of cinematic. Just in case you're interested, maybe you want to uh, make a, a game in the style of an old movie or something, I don't know. But that's pretty much all I have to say on fixed camera angles. Now let's give a little Thank you to all of our monthly supporters on coffee that keep us so, well, alive. There they go. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss another video. If you wish to support our earnest insanity, you can check the links in the description to donate or buy merch. Until next time, goodbye.